Mark, you have to come closer so that people can see you. So we made it happen. Hello. Hello again. Hey, everybody. Hi. Okay, third one. Try. Three times a charm. Exactly. So thanks for taking time for this and for the community. So I'd like to introduce you to the YouTube community and to the Instagram community. And uh, actually, I met Mark uh, months ago or a year ago at a sound healing sound bath, actually, mm -hmm. which is what we do. We do ceremonies, mm -hmm. work a lot with different instruments, and I really enjoyed it. And he also does breath work. And since I want to bring breath work to you guys, I thought, why not invite him? He has experience. And yeah, invite him to share his knowledge. And for everybody hesitating when it comes to breath work, please ask your questions. So, just introduce yourself to the community and what you do. And yeah. Well, she did it beautifully. But yeah, my name is Mark. Um, we created Sacred Ways about two and a half years ago, I'd say. And uh, we work primarily uh, with sound and breath, sometimes both. Um, we do these transpersonal breathwork ceremonies, also known as you know conscious energy breathwork, infused with a lot of tribal sounds, um, where we really help people to to get into a transpersonal state and to release a lot of trauma and to feel that expansion of, uh, of our being. So we do that, and as Melinda said, we're hosting sound ceremonies. Um, our main residence is here in this beautiful space. We're actually having a sound ceremony tonight at Yoga Hastups in Yedikon. Beautiful, beautiful space. We do one-on-one -on -one sessions upstairs. Uh, I work with a uh, vibrant acoustic table, tuning forks. So everything that has to do with sound, frequency, and breath. So, yeah. So my big question is, how did you come to breathwork? Like, do you remember when your like your first breathwork experience, maybe, or a significant moment, and why you chose to actually dive deeper into this work? Well, I sort of had the privilege to to grow up with a mother who was very much in tune with breathwork, meditation. I'm not saying that I was all, I was interested, but obviously when I was eight, nine, 10 years old, my mom would tell me, all right, this is, I would ask a lot of questions, but obviously for a 10 year old boy, you know, I was like, okay, just sit there and breathe. And she tried to really, you know, explain it to me and all that, but it wasn't until my, you know, early adulthood, probably my early twenties, where I um, discovered it, at a place called Esalen Institute in Big Sur, California. And for those who don't know, Esalen was back in the day, 60s, 70s. The, they call it the birthplace of the human potential movement in the Western world. Mm -hmm. So this is where Leonard Orr uh, and Stanislav Grof, all these you know, amazing people, actually had their first lectures on breathwork. Amazing. So you were at the hotspot, hot actually, to learn. Yeah, sure, it's a hotspot, but that's where I came across because my older brother would do a work study there. And it wasn't until like seven years later, late 20s, when I did different workshops at Esalen, you know, sometimes for three weeks and again for two months. And that's where I really immersed myself in that kind of transpersonal breath work as in holotropic breath work and um, conscious connected breath work. And I've never worked with Stanislav Graf, some other amazing people. And, um, you know, it really opened a world to me that was just way bigger than we could perceive or possibly perceive. So it was, it came at a moment when I really needed it. Always does. <laughs> yeah, always does. Yeah. Somehow it finds us. Somehow I put it aside for many years. Mm -hmm. So after eight years in California, I came back in 2013. And it was only like um, six, seven years ago where I really started working with 
breath again on a conscious level. Mm -hmm. And not only that kind of transpersonal breath work, but also, you know, pranayama and uh, all kinds of ancient breathing techniques that really get you into a present moment awareness state. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it's a beautiful tool. It's, it's, you know, these two tools, sound and breath, is, you know, I wouldn't say all there is, but almost, you know, these two tools will, they're just given to us, you know. Yeah, totally. I think um, the more you work with vibration consciously, mm -hmm. the more intuitive and heart you get. And breath is actually like giving, so it makes perfect sense to me. And um, what would you say are key benefits for people who hesitate? Because I have a lot of people around who say, yeah, I've heard about breath work, but I just didn't make it a priority. I didn't yeah. try to think of a class yet. Even if it's like for free, by the way, we're going to have a little um, exercise yeah. as well. So what would you say are benefits for people who don't know or don't understand? Are you talking about breath work in general or that? You know, particular yeah, well, holotropic or transpersonal yeah, breath work. Yeah, you know. yeah. Well, I think it all goes together. You know, I mean, depending on the technique, obviously, not everyone is is ready for, you know, that really deep kind of like transpersonal breath work. But as in just breathing techniques, and you know, based on you know the Vedic philosophies and Sufism and all of that, you know. The main benefits are, you know, body awareness, because mm -hmm. this is where everything will be manifested, where we we don't really like to tap into it, but everything emotionally manifests in our body. So all these breathing techniques really help us to really dive within and listen, you know, well, what's going on in my body? Where are there contractions? You know, we have two feelings, I say, in our body, which is a contraction and expansion, you know, and usually we don't want to pierce through the contraction because it really hurts what we might experience there. Mm -hmm. um, but again, there's some breathing techniques that really get us to a body awareness state. So that's the first benefit. And second, the second benefit will be the emotional um, awareness, obviously, that can lead to a spiritual awareness. And the third and most important benefit probably be um, um, uh, present moment awareness, you know, because this is where everything happens. Everything happens in the present. You know, you don't need to go anywhere or be enlightened or anything like that, but everything happens out of the present moments, you know, and whether that is like some things that we, you know, try to keep away from us for a long time, you know, I always say sit with it. You yeah. know, don't run and don't try to get anywhere else. Just sit with it, whatever comes up. So, yeah. Um, Physical awareness, emotional awareness, and present moment, moment awareness. And also, you know, the health benefits, you know, regulating the nervous system, obviously the right breathing. Um, so uh, the balance in our body is actually given. And, uh, you know, we're not leaning towards an acidic state yeah. physically, which can lead to all kinds of illnesses. Yeah, that's a very important point that people underestimate, I think. You know about the acidic state yeah and uh, also because you were talking about the present moment awareness we hear about embodiment all the time it's like a buzzword mm -hmm. just like breath work actually but that's basically what it means the body man first of all means come into the body be present with what it is and uh yeah, like being in, in integrity actually with thoughts, emotions, how we feel up, just have like everything calibrated. And breath work helps a lot with that. Well, it helps tremendously. You know, it's a first step, even when we talk about it before for a couple of seconds, you know, all these thousands of breathing techniques just help you really, um, you know, preparing you for, for deeper states of, you know, uh, consciousness or meditation, you know, mm -hmm. people hear meditation, I gotta sit still, I just gotta think, you know, if you don't breathe correctly, you know, and you don't get there, that's really hard, you know, and once you get into your own flow of breathing, um, and your thoughts will just be a byproduct of like, you know, nothing that really bothers you anymore, it's mm -hmm. just like a train of thought, you know. Yeah, you don't engage in the thought then. You don't engage in it anymore, exactly. 
So yeah, yeah, we talked about that earlier, that a lot of people think, oh, I have to meditate and I can't just sit still. So breathing actually is a gateway into meditation. It's, it really helps you to calm the nervous system, calm the thoughts and just come more into the present moment. <clears throat> okay, so let's talk about the myth because there are a lot of myths we hear about like this is the magical pill, everybody has to do it, you have to do it once. I don't know. Do you have anything to share about a myth or something you would like to clarify for the community? Not sure if it's a myth. I think um what occurred to me in the last couple of months or years is like, you know, I just see, see like ads, you know, calling breath work to new yoga. And I think even yoga was, you know, mainly misinterpreted you know mm -hmm. and now it's kind of like you know which is a beautiful thing too you know you have more and more amazing practitioners doing a, a breath work um but i think the myth is that one technique is like superior to the other you know i heard like people saying oh this technique is outdated and uh, you should try my technique so that's where i'm struggling with and um, when it comes to transpersonal breath work you know, where you really dive deep and have these, you know, deep, uh, almost awakening experiences. Um, I think it's a myth that, I think the word I like to use is spiritual bypassing. You know? mm -hmm. So people do this work and there's no promises like, okay, now you're, you're getting out of a session and everything is fixed for you, you know? Yeah. It may trigger, a series of positive events, you know, but I think the main thing is still after you breath work, how do you actually integrate it in your daily lives? Yes. How do you integrate it? And uh, same with pranayama, you know, are you, it's it's this one thing about self-discipline where you, you know, it's really important to have your, if you can, if you can wake up at five or six in the morning, have half an hour and it's beautiful and do this every day, amazing. There's just times in life where that's not an option, you know. You just might be a parent of a newborn, you know. You just need your sleep. So one of my teachers uh, told me over and over again, you know, one conscious breath could be yeah. meditation. So I think it's not what kind of breath work you do. As long as you have someone as a experienced instructor, you know, leading you all the way towards uh, your own truth and you will feel it intuitively if this or that will be the right technique for you. Yeah, so cool. different breathwork methods with different practitioners, I think it's really important who lead you, um, which ultimately the practitioner, practitioner should lead you towards you finding your own flow, you know, then you don't need anyone at all. But um, I think the myth that it's a magical pill that solves all the problems, you know, um, you know what I mean? I think so. I think um, you've touched on a few points. The first one is, is this um, competition between um, techniques. I think it's for marketing reason. Come to me, buy my stuff, whatever. So that's not true. There is, it's whatever fit your lifestyle and yeah. your like needs right so they're different techniques it might be breath work it might be something else within the yogic realm and then um what else did you say yeah you talked about discipline how to integrate what occurred during a session or even having the discipline to get into your own routine to find your own style your own rhythm with it and i would add don't change yourself if fall out of a routine that's surrender that's that's what, what ultimately creates flow is surrender and self-discipline you know mm -hmm. if you find the balance in that mm -hmm. then you're in the flow mm -hmm. you know but yeah different ways but different people's lifestyle you know um there's this big thing about and thanks god for people like wim hop you know and probably that's the myth you're talking about it's the wim hop method it's nothing really new you know it's a thousand years old but he somehow combined it with this ice bucket experience the cold punch which is probably a really an amazing experience you know <laughs> definitely too cold for me but i see people going that route and it's amazing 
what it, what it can do to you physically and emotionally. Um, but when you hear people say, well, do you want to take the easy way in life? Or do you want to take the challenge, you know, because you grow by challenging yourself, you know. Again, um, a mother who, who's been sleep deprived for three years, you know, I'm not sure if an ice bath or an ice bath experience for seven days straight would be the right thing for her. I think yeah, good point. mother with sleep deprivation so many years needs to, needs to be nurtured, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. so there's subtle techniques to really get you there. And she already has the challenge of being a mother, you know, that's just one example, you know. So again, um, there's way thousands of techniques, you know, and they're based on ancient traditions. Yes. Going back to Sufis and, you know, indigenous traditions, you know, obviously Vedic traditions. Yes. And so on. So we're talking about different uh, traditions. I'd say let's experience also breath work exercise. But is there anything you'd like to share before we go into the exercise with the community? If they hesitate trying, let's say. But I hesitate trying doing any kind of breath work. It will call you, you know, if you hesitate, it's okay. You know? There's no pressure, and this work calls you. And, and I think that now we're all there that we know, you know, scientifically that the right breathing helps you. Mm -hmm. So it depends on which, you know, which kind of breath work you're, you're focused on, but especially holotropic breath work or transpersonal breath work, you know. Um, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of a gradual process, you know, uh, no instant gratification. You know. So if you come to a, um, conscious energy breathwork session in a ceremonial setting. It's a wonderful, wonderful experience, but it's okay to be just, you know, a little cautious about it. And obviously talk to people who've experienced it and it's it's a trust issue as well with whoever you sit with. And uh, if you don't do it tomorrow, that's totally fine. If you don't do it next month, that's okay. You know, I will call you. Mm -hmm. I think there's no pressure needs to be applied in this kind of work. Okay, well, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. So let's do a breath work. I invite everybody who's watching, you know, YouTube or on Instagram, replay or live to join. What are we prepping for? What are we prepping for? Yes. Um, I think, you know, sometimes people are surprised how the easiest breath work techniques can be the strongest ones you know so we're not doing anything fancy so to say um but we talked about it before i think uh, uh the session short session of kapalbati breathing which is this abdominal breathing um that kind of like seems like it's shallow breathing but it's not and even just the rapid breathing technique Seems like you could hyperventilate, but you're not. Um, and still, if you're pregnant, uh, any cardiovascular diseases or you have high blood pressure, um, you might want to refrain from doing this kind of breath work right now. All right. So uh, Kapalbhati is just, you know, a breath work technique to really, well, for once it gets you, you do it in the morning, it gets you really started. Um, as in you need your focus, um, it regulates your nervous system really, really quickly. It really gets your metabolism going in a healthy way. Um, it gets you into a, um, a natural balance. Yeah, I actually use it instead of coffee. Oh, really? Yeah. I do it before the coffee. Oh, yeah, and then how's yeah. the matcha? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's the coffee, but mm -hmm. yeah, but it's super powerful. It's super powerful. So you basically just, you're working with your abdomen you know, just this part, uh, what's um, interesting about it, it's an automatic inhalation technique. So you're just focusing on, on the exhale, as in, so the inhale uh, happens automatically, mm -hmm. you know. And you're just using your abdominal muscles down here, you know. But um, also you focus on the rapid breathing, as in, and one channel through the nose, obviously, and it goes like, 
That's rather quick. That's rather quick. We can actually start up with three rounds and um, sorry, a little slower, not too slow. And obviously, if it feels uncomfortable for you, adapt your breathing. Um, that's totally fine. There shouldn't be any, you know, pressure on it. Oh my God, I gotta go there. No, just be really uh, connected with this breathing technique. Just focus on the exhale, and you will see the inhale happens automatically. So we actually just pump. You yeah, like this pump. How you call yeah. it? Get the fire going. Exactly, okay. that's how it works. But you know, this is a more uh, gross body activation technique and. What I like about it and how I do it is I do like a round of 30. And then after 30, with the with the last exhale, I go into what we you know, what I call the ocean breathing technique, where you really go into a southern breathing technique, all the way down from your root up to your heart. You know, you really feel the expansion. But after a round of Kapabhati, what you feel is like this body awareness, you know, your heart pumping, mm -hmm. you know, you also feel where my, every like tension or contractions in your body. So it's kind of like a mindfulness technique before you actually get into meditation to go back and forth. So Kapabhati, go back to ocean breathing. Do another round of Kapabhati, you know. And when you say ocean breathing, is this you mean in China breath or? So you just be like, you know, where you really connect to your root chakra mm -hmm. in this natural flow state with your and do I have to make an ocean sound or no I have to make an ocean sound you know I just call it like that you can just call it like you know you get into regular breathing but more like conscious regular breathing you know okay. and obviously you can apply you know the bandhas and all that we don't we're not going to do that okay. and there yet it's just about you know get your system going and then be aware of what's going on inside. And after the third round, you would actually stay there and go into meditation, you know. Okay, so you got the lead, helpful. And the command. I hope it made sense, mm -hmm. but you know, let's do three rounds, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. So if you want to, I invite you to put your um, left hand onto your heart and right, um, right hand. You have done. Mm -hmm. And go within. Whenever you're ready, let's start with the first round. It's breathing technique. Not quite as rapid as it was showing before. One channel through the nose. into your heart and just let your breath drop. Feel within what's happening. Heart pump, blood stream. Checking if your shoulders are relaxed. Is your jaw relaxed? Completely connected to your lower body. You're sitting straight, spine straight as an arrow. Be aware of your thoughts. Just let them pass. Just be 
focus on your breathing. Remove any kind of distractions, whether they're emotionally or physically. Stay connected with your breath. You might be aware that the way you're breathing is way deeper already. Softer now that your heart rate is coming back down. Every breath gets softer and softer. No effort. Take a inhale and exhale. Place your hands, your heart, tummy again. Before we go for another round, you know, you can accelerate your breathing slightly, whatever feels comfortable for you. And if there's any rest tension, you know, just imagine to you shake it off with this rapid breathing technique. And go. Tune into your body one more time. If there's any contractions you might feel, just gently breathe through it. With every inhale, not only feel your chest expand, but your heart. It's your heart expanding more and more. With such ease.
We're about to go for the last round, rapid breathing. You may go a little faster as last time or not. Go with your own inner voice, which is always voice of reason. It's the same process again. What's going on with your body? Store your emotions. Just feel it. I through it. And surrender. Gradually dive into complete stillness for a few minutes. And we invite you to 
your back. If you do it, do it gently at your own pace. Look through your fingertips. Stretch your fingers. You know, put your hands on your face. As you go into stillness, is the way you come out of stillness. And obviously, it's very nice to stay after a third round, stay in a state of still, a state of being for a few more minutes or longer. You know. For tonight, that will have to do. Yeah, thank you for that. It's very nice to have to wake up, to be honest. Um, well, in closing, where can people find you if they'd like to work with you? Well, it's all on our website, sacredways.earth or sacredways.ch. You know, we have all our events listed on there, um, our offerings, retreats, it's all on there. And there's some exciting new things coming probably towards the end of the year, you know, online workshops and actually a, a real life program, you know, that's about transpersonal psychology, um, sound healing and breath work. So we're really excited for, you know, to see what the future brings. And uh, in the meantime, you know, you're welcome anytime. We welcome you always to one of our sound ceremonies or uh, breathwork sessions on Fridays. Yeah. We'd love to see you. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. And thank you so much for having me. Yes. You know, it took a while tonight. And the tech. Technical issues. Yeah, that it worked. I'm really happy. Thanks for tuning in. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. Um, we'll get back to you. And of course, share, like, subscribe, the usual. It helps the growth of our work. Like spread the word. Spread the word. Yeah. Thanks for being here and um yeah, see you soon. See you Bye. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.